Hi, as you can see from our battle plan, we're going to continue from where we left off in our previous video uh, by focusing on the init sound, the sprite data, which is SP data, and the loading of the sprite data. So let's get started by firing up Merlin. Okay, we're going to change our drive to 9. Jump into the editor and write our init sound code. What we're going to do is take the Porsche that you see there in basic and uh, make the equivalent assembler. It's just a bunch of pokes to a memory jest, all starting from S. So this should be pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. All right, we're going to compile this real quick. Awesome, let's save this and put it in our mouse file. Remember, we're using a W command because we want to save this as a text file. I'm going to assemble it. Excellent, looks like we're in good shape. Let's save the source code. Okay, now we're gonna take, we're gonna create the SP data.put file by copying all those data commands into uh, its own file. So let's get started. Oops, gotta start a new file here. There we go. And then through the use of time magic, we're going to key this in. Okay, and here's all of the data keyed in and verified. I don't want to put you to sleep watching me type that much stuff in. Um, as you can tell, it starts by jumping to the end of the file, and then it creates a block of memory with all of our sprite data into it. So let's save this. W to write it out. And now we're going to bring it into our mouse source. Now let's see if this assembles. Cool, that's good. Let's save it. All right, uh, looking at a battle plan, you can see that the next thing we need to do is to load the sprite data in. So let's start creating this load sprite routine. I'm gonna use a copy command to clone this section of code. I'm going to use an interesting edit command. We can edit sort of a range of lines. You just type in edit 19, 26, and I get a chance to change all those ones to twos. Then we're going to do the same thing for first break three. Excellent. There's just a few more pokes we need to add in, and we're all done. The assembler will fail because those symbols um, for SP data exist in another file, but let's just make sure it's structurally correct. We should be able to skip over the references to SP data. 
Nope, I guess we can't skip over it. Well, we're gonna save it and <laughs> try it with the full mouse. So let's give this a shot. Put. And load mouse in. And we're going to assemble it. There's a, the listing is getting longer and longer, and the output takes forever. You can press the F1 key so it doesn't just write the output, which actually really slows the assembler down. So I'm going to press F1 right when it starts out. Looks like we're doing pretty good. Let's save this out. At this point, we've initialized the screen, we have initialized our sound, we've got our sprite data, uh, we loaded our sprite data. Uh, we're going to work next on two short loops that we need to just pause for uh, a moment while the animation's running. All right, so let's create, let's go to the editor, start a new file. Do a quick assembler check and then I'll explain what it's doing. Ooh, I see a typo on line 19. Looks good. What we're doing here is we're going to read the Jiffy Clock, which is at memory location A2. It, um, well, it's one of the locations. This is the one that ticks 60 times a second. So what we do is um, we load the accumulator with six. We store it in a piece of memory we have down here called ticks. Um, clear the carry. We load the accumulator what's currently in the Jiffy clock. We add the amount of ticks that we want to to wait for. So if it, if it says if we have six, we read ten. It says sixteen, and then we keep checking until it's sixteen, and then when it's done, we we exit out. Uh, before and after it, we push all the registers onto the stack. We do our logic, we pull them off. This way we can call this from our code and um, preserve all the registers that the other code is working on. Seems like a lot of code, but it's it's pretty simple. Now I'm no 6510 guru. There's probably a much better way to do this, but this is the best that I came up with and I'm pretty happy with it, I think. So let's, let's save this. And we're going to call this um, wait.put. Now, this particular wait command is used in between each frame of anim animation. We also need a much shorter one for each sound effect. So this is kind of really cheesy. We're just going to clone this file. And we're going to change the tick at line 12 instead of waiting for six we're going to wait for one and then we got to make some changes so this can be called um wait short as a, a shorter version of wait All right, so wait short is um, if you JSR into here, it stops the um, program for one tick. If you JSR into wait, the previous file it stops for uh, six ticks. All right, let's link these into our uh, file.
and we're going to assemble it. All right, I think we're good. Let's save our source. All right, the next we need to do is we need um, the make sound part, which uh, depending on the sprite that's active, makes uh, turns on either sound channel one or sound channel two for a moment. So let's get into that. Gonna make sure it uh, compiles first. Oops, we have a typo in line 12. Oh, these aren't typos. Uh, those are, um, S was defined in our init sound and we don't have access to it here. So we're gonna assume it's just fine, but let me kind of explain what it's doing. Um, if you look at the battle plan, you can see that uh, this particular piece of code is called right before we show each uh, frame of animation. If it's the first frame, which is 192, it makes a sound. Uh, we turn the sound on by putting that 129 and S plus four. We call wait short to wait one sixth of a second, and then we put a 128 into that to turn it off. Basically the same thing for the other sound, which is 193. The third sprite, we don't make a sound. So we kind of get this kind of like click, 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 click sound, or I should say tap, tap. All right, so let's save this and add it to our code. assemble this whole project and see how we're looking. All right, it compiled. Let's write this out. Oopsie. We want to use S for saving our source. Looking at the disk, we are down to just one final part to make our program work, and that's the animate part. We actually animate and, and, and basically do the main part of the program. Let's do it, let's get started. So let's get back to the editor. Start a new one and we're gonna do the actual main animation. Let's see if this uh, compiles. Oop, I see a typo. The problem is the V label is defined in another file, and that's okay. We'll let's get past that for now. Okay, I'll uh, kind of describe what this does. This is animate that put, and it kind of follows the basic code. Right, we start by loading a zero into V plus 16, uh, which is the, if I'm not mistaken, that is the seam flag. So when a sprite gets to 255, we have to advance it to one so it appears on the right side of the seam, which is kind of like two thirds through the screen. We could only, you know, with 320 pixels across, a byte only goes up to 255, and then we have to increment uh, another byte to get it to the other side of that. So that's what that sets up in the first uh, two lines. The load 192 points to the first sprite. Um, and then we kind of, again, following the program, uh, we're, we're stepping three, that's what the three increment X's are for. The uh, the X position into V, 
we make a sound, uh, we wait, we step three, we're, um, to see if we're where, need, where we need to stop at. Stop at a defined is 255, which is down here. Let me see if I can get down there. There it is. Uh, we check to see if we are at the seam, if we have this little check seam function. It checks to see if we're at, you know, over 255. It sets the bit to one, so we start at 256. We set X to zero, and then instead of doing another 255, we do another. another. We go another 93 bytes, and then we stop, and then the program ends. Uh, that is the animate loop. Let's give this a try. There is a whole program, not a whole lot to it. It reads kind of like a script. You know, so it's a screen, set the sound up, declare some sprite data, uh, put it into place. Uh, we have some functions in wait and wait short to, you know, pause for one and sixth uh, of a second. I'm sorry, one and one sixtieth of a second. Um, make sound is routine we call to make the sound and animate is that main loop. Let's compile this and see how it works. Once again, I pressed F1 to suppress the output so it doesn't just fly across our screen. All right, we're going to exit out of here. I'm gonna save our source code. We're going to output the object code. And now for the final test, we're gonna run it from the Commodore prompt and see how it works. There it is, the dancing mouse in assembler. Excellent. Um, I had a lot of fun putting that together. It definitely wasn't as easy as what you saw. I edited a lot out of me uh, with typos and, and things like that. But, uh, but yeah, what a really fun project. Um, and that's a really fun assembler package, Merlin. Um, I had never heard of it. Of course, I haven't heard of many of these assembler packages on the Commodore. Uh, but uh, thank you for taking this journey with me. I hope you liked it.